the more I, I, I think of that word nigga and the discomfort everybody is having with it is the is the happier I get because it's like um, watching how the system has worked for us over the years we black people seem to in the in the most amazing ways possible seem to overcome great adversity you know you can't you can't you, <laughs> you cannot look at the degradation of slavery and where many of us are today and not realize how much we can endure sin it's a sad way to find out that we can endure great torture but it's interesting so they gave us this term, a nigga, nigga boy, nigga picnic, panda plantation. And we grew up feeling degraded whenever the term was mentioned by somebody with lighter skin than us. We felt hurt. Somewhere along the line, some level of defiance just jumped out of the people. So we just got car we're bridging them, the people that we love and trust and trust us and love us we call them our niggas and what's interesting about it is that we have now coined the, the term so well that they can't say it we gave power to a word that they wanted to degrade us with and they get black people to tell us to stop saying the word because we're degrading ourselves now we're not degrading ourselves if, I read, if, if Dr. King or um, Malcolm X was in our room and looked point in my direction and said, yo, that's my nigga right there, you know how proud I would feel? <laughs> you can't tell me how I'm supposed to feel with the use of the word. You just don't like the fact that we have empowered the word. Yeah, until you stop treating us like niggas or treating anyone like niggas, that word will always be in everyone's vocabulary. That's how it works. Why we still put up photographs of dinosaurs? We'll always talk about dinosaurs. Or cats or dogs. Same with niggas. So yeah, thank you for the track. Thank you, Mahmoud Abdul Rauf. People look him up, Chris Jackson. See who he was, see who he is. The man sacrificed a lot. You know, here we got Colin Kaepernick over the past year. Mirroring the same things for um, the abuse black people suffer from police departments. Imagine we're actually protesting people murdering us and we feel like criminals when we do it. <laughs> anyway, before we go any further, um, for the people in, in uh, internet radio land, uh, you can't see it but you'll hear it. Uh, look up Canadian Reggae World, look up 876ers, you will read what I write about the culture of 876. 876 is Jamaica's area code. Um, I've always thought that we can change our own structures by elevating ourselves, by buying product that we know where the finances goes back to reggae music and all them weird and I see so if you if you someone to say you like my music or the, the shows that I've done over the years or the things that I write or um, the show itself here on Roots Reggae Radio conscious thought thank you very much my product our product this is reggae product 876 service reggae lean 416ers, that's RepCap Canada that I work with to promote 876ers. Um, we still promote RADA. We don't, it's not, a, it's not, we're not trying to make profit from that. We just want to spread the message of non-violence to our women. And um, Reggae for Life. Reggae for Life is not just uh, a bunch of product I'm selling. It's actually a, a liberty that I'm trying to promote to people, uh, a positive lifestyle and always being able to help other humans. Seeing our, our whole goal for Reggae for Life is anybody calls, if it's within, within our power, we're gonna help you. Seeing sometimes we never need money for that. You know, see, we just tell the world about an issue and sometimes it changes it. So, 
Yeah. Support reggae music. I don't get money from no government. I can't get no money from no government with my mouth. And I'm not curbing my mouth. See? Reggae music wasn't made to bow to anybody. So, my product, I, I go out, we get investment, we get investors, and we want to turn profit too for the regular work that we do. So instead of somebody asking if they could donate to me, well, don't, don't just donate money to me. Buy what we, we, we sell, wear it on your head, wear it on your body, the t-shirts that we do. We'll, we'll look at the tank tops and tubes and we want to do all those things, but you know what, Regents and sisters, we can't do those things until we sell more things. And I don't have a huge re reservoir of product or cash right now. So if you want to help out and help me to continue doing my reggae work, purchase reggae product and encourage other people to do the same. Guys, like I said, no government agency will ever give me money. But I don't want that money. I want to prove that I can do this without them. It can be done because reggae music has its own identity and people and fans. So anyway, I posted that information about a reggae infrastructure in Canada. And um, got quite a bit of a response from a whole heap of people, which is kind of nice. And um, I guess the reason why I posted it, main reason I posted it is that I'm actually putting together another one of those um, Canadian reggae summits. I've had five of them in the past and um, each one I had seemed less significant than the one previous one. Mm. And again, my objective with the summit was always to bring people together so that it, it would encourage um, more growth amongst ourselves, people liaising and working together, working on projects together, promotions, whatever, internationally and locally as well. So that was the objective of the summit. I don't know how much of that ever went on. I don't think anything ever did. So I wouldn't say they were failures. I think they were great to do so I could get to this one and the ones after this because the next one I do is we'll make some kind of move for reggae music in Canada as well as globally. You know what I'm saying? Reggae is not just a Canadian thing, so our Jamaican thing is a worldwide thing. Okay, so my whole thing is do not expect support, aid, or interest from any of our government officials as it pertains to reggae music. I have met with all of them, trust me. I overstand their game, and I will bow to you now. I will never meet with any of them again, ever. <laughs> they pencil you in for their meeting just so that they can have your name on the books, yet no matter what is discussed, reggae music is never on their agenda. I believe in the real root of the meeting is to find out just how much I know or how much I have learned from that continued joke that they keep playing on us and playing on me. They want to know if I've wisened up yet. Well, I obviously haven't. I'm still playing the dutiful house nigga, giving Massa, going to Massa to see what he want. And can he please let reggae into the Canadian reggae scene? Please, Massa, let him reggae, please. I don't need you. I never did. I'm telling that to all my reggae people out there. Them don't want it, yes, so it's irrelevant. We're still playing it, and we're gonna export it to the world. The best part of this, you know, is they ask me what I would do if I had the opportunity. And I would just blah, 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 and just continue running my mouth of what I would do and we could do to improve the situation. Well, people, all of that is just pure bullshit, eh? It takes decades and centuries of these meetings and these people let you know how programmed and stupid we are. Me, me in particular, I am easily the stupidest one because I, I still want to play it straight and honest and openly like a, like a program idiot because they don't play the game nice. They let you play the game nice and they give you all kinds of excuses. Reggae is a niche product. 
that means we'll never play your music, fool. When one employs any kind of wisdom, it is perfectly clear that these gatekeepers, they keep the gate, we can't get through it, are there to monitor what we are doing. They pretend to be interested to help, but in actuality, it's a hoax. Not to lend any kind of aid or support. They will never do it. They have not done it, and they never will. When they let reggae into the 80s, when they was doing all these live concerts, they didn't realize it was how popular the thing could get when they start seeing it. You haven't seen any concerts since the 80s, man. Put on by any Canadian companies. Why is that, man? Huh? You need to figure that out. When the wisdom really kicks in, you will realize that the conversation that these people, any conversation to these people must stop. It must end. Cease immediately. From me anyway. I know, I can hear and I can feel Marcus Messiah and His Majesty. I can feel their and hear their voices being totally correct. A hundred, nearly a hundred years ago, in 60, 70 years ago, saying that we should work amongst ourselves to elevate ourselves. There is truly no other path. There has never been any other path. The look at ones and twos of us that they let in is to confuse the rest of us to believe in they, they will let more of us in. 